Hello and welcome. I'm Vincent McCory and this is Africa 54. A top military official in Nigeria says the military knows where more than 200 schoolgirls are being held captive by Islamic, Islamist militants, but says it would be difficult to use force to rescue them. Chief of Defense Staff Air Marshal Alex Badi told reporters in Abuja Monday that a military operation could be dangerous for the girls. The good news for the girls is that we, can, we, we know where they are, but we cannot tell you. Okay, we cannot come and tell you military secrets here. Just leave us alone. We are working. We will get the girls back. Were kidnapped in mid April while taking exams in a secondary school in the remote northern village of Chibok. Even as some people celebrated today's news, dozens gathered in Nigeria's capital to protest what they consider the government's inaction. Militants from the Islamist group Boko Haram have claimed responsibility for the kidnappings and say they want to exchange the abducted girls for members of its group who are in prison. Nigerian President Gulak Jonathan and his government are facing sharp criticism both uh, domestically and internationally for their failure to rescue the missing girls. Several countries, including the United States, are providing Nigeria with help to look for the girls. Well, for more details, we are joined uh, via phone from Maiduguri, Nigeria, by Ibrahim Ahmed of uh, VOA's uh, House of Service. Ibrahim, welcome to Africa 54. Thank you for having me, Vincent. You're welcome. Now, what are you hearing about uh, what the government is doing with this information that they say they, they have about uh, the location of the girls? Well, we only know one thing. That's what they said they're not going to do, which is try to rescue the girls by force. But um, I just spoke with the district head of Chibok Town, Engineer Zana Madu, who expresses the light that at least they now know that their girls are alive and safe. Uh, but he's also asking that the military should not use force, that it should uh, try to negotiate the release of the girls with the militants. We really want to hang on to that information and hope. Uh, Ibrahim, uh, there have been new attacks by Boko Haram. Give us some details. Well, uh, there was an attack last evening uh, on the town of Buniadi, which is in nearby Yobe State when hundreds of militants came into the town and attacked a military base there. We spoke with a uh, JTF source in Damatu who said that at least 24 were killed. Police officers were also killed, including the divisional police officer and the divisional crime officer. The militants also managed to run military and so of those places which experienced uh, an attack mm -hmm. when students of the government college in uh, Buniadi were massacred by the militants some months ago. Well, Ibrahim, can you describe to us the atmosphere in that region? How are people going about their day-to-day -day activities? It is very scary and it is very dangerous. Only the city of Medukuri is a relative safe place to live in this area at all. Everything outside of the city of Medukuri is very dangerous because all the highways have become sort of death traps where motorists are stopped and killed almost daily days or on early days. Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, from Medugui to Goza, Bama, Banki, and all those areas around there, that stretch of highway has been effectively cut off from Kondiga. When you go from Medugui to Kondiga, which is about uh, 25 to 30 kilometers, that's all you can go. Anything after that, uh, there is a high probability that somebody will be attacked or killed on that road. Well, Ibrahim, thank you, and please keep safe, all right? Thank you so much, Vincent. You're welcome. Now, that's Ibrahim Ahmed of VOA's House of Service reporting live from Maiduguri in northeastern Nigeria. Here in the studio, I'm joined by Leo Kayan, head of uh, VOA's House of Service. Welcome, uh, Leo. Yeah, thank you, Vincent. Yes, now we're hearing this uh, new information from the military in Nigeria. First, what is your... What was your immediate reaction when you heard this? 
Well, let, let's, let's take it a little bit uh, backwards and let, let me rewind this issue of the protests, first of all. Mm -hmm. You have to understand the Nigerian psychology when it comes to protests. First of all, that protest, from all intents and purposes, appears to be a sponsored one in response to the one that is organized by the women in red. Uh, we're talking about this protest of celebration where we saw them actually giving support to the military, military and saying that yeah. our gallant soldiers yeah. are bring, going to bring our That girl. is abnormal. That has never yeah. happened in Nigeria before. And yeah. for it to happen, falling, coming shortly after the other one, I mean, makes there's a lot to be seen, I mean, to be found out there. Yeah. That's the first thing. Okay, let's go to the issue of uh, Alex Bade saying that girls have been located. Now, that raises more questions than answers, as far as I'm concerned. Put yourself in the shoes of the parents. You'd ask questions like, all right, so you've seen them. Where are they? Are they in the same group or different groups? Because the pictures we saw were over 50 or thereabout. Now we're talking of 200 girls, or, or more, more than that even. Are they in three camps? Have you looked at them in three camps? How did you do that? Is it foot soldiers in the forest that saw them? Or you got them from, from drone pictures? Or how, I mean, things like that should come through. But he said, we're not going to let you know, we're not going to tell you military, military secrets and whatever. But the issue is that, how are you going to rescue these girls? Now, there was some uh, information that uh, perhaps uh, the Nigerian government had sent an emissary to mm -hmm. meet with the militants and they've held talks and actually there was rumor that there had been almost an agreement to release about 100 militants in exchange for 50, 50 girls. girls. Is that information that could be verified? Well, that information is not something we can rely on because the same military had given us the impression before that they had rescued some of the girls. It turned out the story was not true. So what's there to believe? When, for example, the committee set up by the federal government to rescue the Chibok girls is headed towards Washington, D.C., rather than Chibok. They've not been able to visit Chibok itself. So what is this story about rescue, and what's the committee coming to do in D.C.? Mm -hmm. Now, someone will ask, what is it that the military needs to do uh, to gain some credibility with the majority of Nigerians? I think the military needs to be more transparent about its internal chemistry. Right now, we are talking about mutinies that are being covered. We're talking about disrespect to officers. We're talking about people not taking instructions, not ready to go and fight because of inferior equipment. We're talking about corruption in the army. These things should be dealt with. I think that's the first thing they need to do. Yeah. Has there been any clarity as to the collaboration between the United States and other Western countries? The last thing we heard uh, on this matter is that the, 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 the foreign assistance that is supposed to come is not forthcoming as expected because there is a mistrust between the foreign assistance that are coming and the people that are inside the Nigerian military structure. Yes. Now, very quickly, what are you hearing about the state of mind of the parents of these kids? It's been a long time now. Well, uh, it's sad. It's very sad that uh, some of them have uh, started passing away. As a matter of fact, last week we talked to a relation of one of the parents who died out of stroke, heart attack, he said, and that it's because he has been thinking about his daughter all this while. You can imagine there must be a lot of very heavy psychological burden on the parents. And to think that nothing is forthcoming in terms of psychological counseling is what is making things very difficult for them. The parents are saying they want their girls back. They even want to know how these girls are going to be brought back. You, you can imagine what they think. And I, I, I can only say it's even impossible to imagine what they're yeah, feeling. Yeah. Well, uh, Leo, thank you very much You're for welcome. being here with thank us. Uh, well, that's uh, Leo Kayan of Viewers House uh, Service. Now,